Signing up to Juice Disaster Relief and Medical Team inspires housewives in Nepal to donate their love. We join Saji's Buddha Day ceremonies across the globe and see how local Saji volunteers and the public celebrated the occasion. Welcome to Dar Headlines. I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us. Following the strong quake in Nepal, Saji's Disaster Relief and Medical Team decided to set up a soup kitchen at a tent community in Bhaktapur to make sure quake survivors can enjoy hot meals. To show their support, many housewives in the tent community decided to help out at the soup kitchen. Furthermore, upon learning of the spirit at Saji's Bamboo Bank era, many even donated their love. This is a scene that occurs at Saji's soup kitchen in Bhaktapur every day. Local women have gotten used to coming here to help pick and chop vegetables. Members of Saji's disaster relief and medical team are extremely touched by the selflessness and dedication of these housewives. So the, in the beginning, the master Zhenyan used the very few dollars to help other people who need money. And the, the money comes from all the ladies who go to the market every day. With the help of a translator, these housewives had gained a better understanding of the spirit of Tsuji's bamboo bank era. <laughs> This woman said that everyone should follow Master Zheng Yan's footsteps in helping the less fortunate. She told me that they will start saving some grocery money. In the future, if a country or someone is in need of assistance, they will donate their love to help. After listening to Tsuji volunteers sharing, quick survivors in Nepal donate what they can to help those in greater need. Without a bamboo coin bank, the volunteers decided to use their hats as donation boxes. We can tell from their gestures that everyone here is very generous and kind-hearted. I think our friendship is built on trust and the will to help the less fortunate. I think this is something that moves me deeply. By donating what they can to Tsuji, these housewives show not only their support for the charity organization, but also their love for the less fortunate. To improve the lives of the poor and those suffering in Nepal, Venerable Mataya decided to establish school in a community hospital. Without enough funding and supplies, however, the monk traveled to the city Manhattan office in the United States to ask for assistance. Unfortunately, for various reasons, the volunteers lost contact with the monk after their first encounter. In the wake of the tremor, Tsuji's disaster relief and medical team traveled to Nepal to offer their assistance, and to their great surprise, the volunteers came across the Buddhist monk. Following Tsuji volunteers' footsteps in helping quake survivors is Venerable Matayat, a Nepalese monk. So I feel very grateful to the Shichi Foundation and, and also Master's compassion on Nepal and the land of the Buddha. Since he was young, Venerable Matayat has been wishing to meet Master Zheng Yan in Taiwan to learn more about Tsuji's charitable deeds across the globe. In April of this year, he traveled to the Tsuji Manhattan office in the United States to gain a better understanding of how the organization operates. Following the devastating earthquake, Tsuji volunteers and Venerable Mataya traveled separately to the disaster zone in Nepal to help. To their complete surprise, the volunteers come across Venerable Mataya. I still can't believe that we have met up again, because the world is so big. I saw him in front of the school's front door, and he saw me too. To extend his assistance to the less fortunate in Nepal, Venerable Mataya not only established schools, but also a community hospital. The Buddhist monk also encouraged locals to join disaster relief efforts after the tremor. Venerable Mataya asked volunteers to turn plastic canvas sheets into tents. These tents are later given to quick survivors free of charge, so they will have something that can protect them from wind and rain. Without asking for anything in return, Venerable Mataya and his team almost ran out of money to purchase more plastic canvas. When Venerable Mataya was in need of financial assistance, Tsuji volunteers showed up. It's truly amazing. Fortunately, with the help of Tsuji, Venerable Mataya can continue helping the needy. At the moment, we are at the most vulnerable situation. People are in terror. I appreciate and express my gratitude to all the Tsuji members around the world. 
The good affinity between city volunteers and Venerable Mataya has crossed thousands of miles from the United States and Nepal and will surely continue in the years to come. When the Kaohsiung gas explosion occurred, the 23-year-old son of city volunteer Hu Fengqing was caught in the blast and suffered fractures to his legs and burn injuries to his body as a result. Hu had been forced to become the primary breadwinner in her household and raise her three children at the same time when her husband succumbed to oral cancer in 2013. Though she keeps her emotions all bottled up inside, her children understand the pressure she has been facing and want her to know that they appreciate her very much. Lately, I have been attending the morning and evening study sessions continuously because if I don't have something to keep me occupied, my heart just begins to ache. We started this business from scratch. My husband had planned on retiring after several more years, but by 2012 he discovered he had oral cancer. About a year later, he was gone. One thing just led to another and came all at once. Last year, on the evening of July 31st, I was just walking up to my front door when the gas explosions occurred. My son just screamed, Mom, save me, save me. I found him engulfed in flames, lying on the ground. If my mom hadn't come to my aid, the burn injuries that I suffered probably would be a lot worse. I was the only parent left. I had a big responsibility to shoulder. I regretted that I hadn't pulled him out fast enough. His legs and arms were seriously injured. As soon as we arrived at the hospital, they were all inflamed and swollen. There were big blisters. Whenever doctors debrided his wounds, I had to excuse myself as I just couldn't bear to watch him suffer. When doctors worked only on his skin, he was already writhing in pain, but he would tell me that it was nothing. My heart really ached. He's my only flesh and blood. He is my child. We run an auto parts store. During that period, we could only rely on the payout from my husband's insurance policy to make ends meet. The gas explosions really devastated us. I would visit the 10,000 Buddha at the Kaohsiung Jingzi Hall and cry there before going to the hospital. She's the type that keeps everything bottled up inside, but we all knew. It was probably when the road in front of our home was repaired, which was about six months later. I had suffered regular and comminuted fractures to my legs. It took me about three to four months to walk on my own again without needing any assistance. I wanted to recover quicker to help share my mom's burden. So I immediately began my physical therapy after I was discharged from the hospital. My mom was always running around. She had no time to sit down and answer the phone or enjoy her lunch. Being a mom is the toughest job in the world. The three of us have seen how you devoted yourself. After dad was gone, the stress placed on you grew, whether financially or mentally. We are all very grateful for your efforts and hope that you will finally become a certified city volunteer this year. <laughs> we now introduce you to a filial young man in Tainan, Taiwan. Raised by his maternal grandparents, Wang Guangzhong learned to farm and peddle goods since the 7th grade. Now a 10th grader, Wang hopes he can soon make some good money and care for his grandparents. Picking up his farming equipment, Wang Guangzhong of Tainan, Taiwan, follows his maternal grandparents to the family's field. Though only a 10th grader, he has already been farming for three years. Because my grandpa is not well, I thought I should help out and just learn naturally. Wang is being raised by his grandparents. After his grandpa suffered a stroke when he was in the seventh grade, he learned to farm and is now an experienced farmer. 
Because I have cancer and have not been able to lift heavy items since my surgery, he does all the heavy chores. To lighten the burden of his grandparents, Wang is learning to become an auto mechanic at the Yang Ming Vocational High School. He's enrolled in our co-op program, which provides internship opportunities during summer breaks. That way, he will land a job immediately after he graduates in three years. I hope to find a job that pays well so that I can take care of my grandparents. With his grandparents' best interests at heart, Wang draws up his life's plan and pursues happiness. This year, Tzuji volunteers in 38 countries worldwide organized Buddha Day ceremonies, and today we have more on these celebrations in South America and Africa. In the Dominican Republic, residents of La Romana came together to assist volunteers' arrangements for the event. Meanwhile, in Paraguay, Tzuji volunteers hosted a Buddha Day and Thanksgiving event in Ceuta de Esti. First, let's turn our camera to South Africa and take a look at the celebrations in Durban and Johannesburg. From cleaning up the surroundings to setting up the venue, Tzu-Ching's work together to complete their tasks. As Tzu-Ji volunteers, Chinese and local, all hope to carry out a successful Buddha Day ceremony. This year's event is conducted entirely in both Chinese and English. People from all walks of life and various ethnicities attended the event with their families. Coming together as one, participants bowed sincerely at the Buddha's feet, crossing all religious divides to embrace the Buddhist virtues. Nanghua Temple Dharma Master Hui Xing described the event as a joyous occasion. I sat in the front row and while everyone was singing, I noticed that a leaf had fallen from the tree. It was as if the Buddha was enlightening us with his teachings. Everyone here is a bodhisattva. It's fantastic. First time participant Huang Ting Yu was moved to tears as she was reminded of her late mother. My mom's courage and wisdom paved the way for the stable life I have now. I am very blessed and very content. This is all thanks to my mom. Children knelt down to serve tea to their mothers. These heartfelt gestures mean more than words can say. And, uh, even the moment where she gave me the flower and tea, it was a very good experience. I nearly cried. <laughs> as if I was saying thank you for raising me. So that flower just was a small gratitude, a small gesture of saying just thank you, and thank you for being here today with me. Tzuji volunteers from Durban, South Africa put on a seamless performance from a section of the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings. At another Buddha Day event in Durban, which was attended mostly by members of the Chinese community, volunteers organized a Thanksgiving event for children to express their gratitude. Tzu Qing's and Tzu Shao's knelt before their mothers and presented them with fresh flowers. May is a month of gratitude. Love is also blossoming in hearts. Tzu Buddha Day ceremony in Ciudad del Este, Paraguay, was carried out in the hallway. Despite the limited space, participants honored the enlightened one with deep reverence and sincerity. As it is also Mother's Day, volunteers organized interactive games for mothers and their children. Applying lipstick for their moms blindfolded, some children went off course and one even applied lipstick to his mother's chin. Children were blindfolded and asked to pick out their mother from a group of women. Some found their mothers with ease, some didn't. These interactive games brought parents and their children closer together. 
Meanwhile, here in the Dominican Republic, volunteers pin the corsage of carnations on each mother. During the event, volunteers also prayed for those in Nepal suffering the brunt of an earthquake's devastation. The event concluded with a sign language performance, encouraging residents to pay their love forward. This year, the Buddha Day ceremony in Myanmar was held at the Ma Yanggong No. 1 High School. Drama masters, students and faculty of a local novice nun school and teachers from 12 schools, which have been rebuilt by Tsuji, all participated. But first, we traveled to Vietnam to see how local Tsuji volunteers managed to hold two Buddha Day celebrations in one day. 5 o'clock in the morning, Tsuji volunteers in Vietnam are ready to pick up those attending the Buddha Day ceremony held at the Taipei School in Ho Chi Minh City. Despite the early hour, more than 200 participants make a point of attending the event to pay their respects to the Buddha and to cleanse in their hearts. We attend the Buddha Day ceremony not to bathe the Buddha but to cleanse our hearts. The Dharma always reminds us to keep our hearts pure. The Buddha Day ceremony is simple yet solemn. Right now, I'm filled with Dharma joy. As Buddha Day is an important Buddha celebration, over the years, Tzu volunteers have been organizing Buddha Day ceremonies at the Taipei School. This year, local Chinese communities, care recipients and representatives of the local Red Cross are taking part in the event. Tzu's Buddha Day ceremony is very special and different from those of other Buddhist groups. The ceremony makes me feel peaceful and at ease. I have attended Tsuji's Buddha Day ceremony for several consecutive years. Every year, I see people come together to pay their sincerest respect to the Buddha. The solemn ceremony makes me feel at ease. After the ceremony comes to an end, Tsuji volunteers quickly travel to Binyun province to prepare for another Buddha Day celebration. Under the leadership of Tsuji volunteers, Taiwanese businessmen and members of the public pay their respects to the Enlightened One and pray for world peace. Natural disasters such as earthquakes and typhoons have affected countries across the globe. By partaking in Tsuji's Buddha Day ceremony, I hope to pray for a disaster-free world. Meanwhile, inside the assembly hall of the Ma Yanggong No. 1 High School in Myanmar, Tsuji volunteers are also holding a Buddha Day ceremony as well as 47 Dharma Masters and the faculty and students of a local school for novice nuns, 12 teachers are also taking part. Despite having to travel a long distance, these teachers insist on participating in the ceremony to express their thanks to Tsuji for rebuilding their schools. I hope to become someone who can extend a helping hand to the least fortunate. Students and volunteers are also on site to assist the elderly. Also seizing the opportunity to attend the event is a group of Taiwanese businessmen who have been supporting the charity organization over the years. Mr. Liu told me that he is willing to provide us with any assistance to the best of his ability. After the Buddha Day ceremony, city volunteers encourage children to offer a cup of tea to their parents as a way to express their love and gratitude. <laughs> The tears I shared were tears of joy. I often ignored my mother's feeling because I had to take care of her three younger siblings. By partaking in the Buddha Day ceremony, members of the public have the chance to repay the grace of the Buddha, the grace of parents and the grace of sanctioned beings. The Tsuji Thailand chapter recently held a Buddha Day ceremony and awarded new year scholarships to underprivileged students. Parents and teachers seized the occasion to thank Tsuji for helping these children to continue their education. The Buddha Day ceremony was held at the construction site of Jing Si Hall in Bangkok. Oh. Nearly 200 students from 19 schools in Bangkok also attended the ceremony, where new shoot scholarships were awarded. By awarding new shoot scholarships, we hope to lessen the parents' burdens.
The volunteers awarded scholarships to the students with a 90-degree ball, and all were reminded of how they attended Chinese class and did recycling together. I often do recycling and attend Chinese class here. From doing so, we have learned to be independent and cherish our blessings. I will spend the money on stationery, uniforms, and books for children. This is helpful as these are necessary supplies. We appreciate all those who support these students, and I hope that they will continue to help children pursue education. Following Buddhist teachings, the Tsuji volunteers have planted seeds of love in the hearts of the young generation. Lin Ye, a leprosy patient who had lived in Leshan Sanatorium since she was 16 years old, passed away at the age of 83. In spite of her illness, she adopted 18 underprivileged children, and her life story was featured in Dai Drama. Although no longer around, Lin Ye will always be remembered for her love and passion for life. 83-year-old Grandma Ling Ye passed away at 11.30 p.m. on May 13th as a result of renal failure. I stayed in the hospital for a week when I gave birth. After I returned, my adoptive mother fed me six meals in a day and washed the diapers for me. Zhang Liqing was adopted at age 11, and Ling Ye cared for her for 49 years. Even this bed brings back their memories. When she stayed here, we would take naps after lunch. Sometimes I slept here and at other times I slept inside. On the top of Grandma Ling Ye's chest of drawers are her red envelopes and a receipt for her donation to Tsuji's medical mission. Although she had received treatment for her heart and kidney problems at Taipei Tsuji Hospital, at the end, she refused to undergo cardiopulmonary resuscitation. She had been practicing Buddhist teachings for years and knew about illness-related suffering. Since she was elderly, she didn't want to waste medical resources. When she passed away, she did not yell or struggle with pain. No, she was very calm. Lin Ye joined Siji 37 years ago and for numerous good affinities. Her love was like her favorite courtyard, blooming under sunshine while safeguarding Le Shen Sanatorium. We go to Penang, Malaysia at the end of the show, where Siji's care recipient joined the organization's Buddha Day celebration. Besides praying for peace and harmony, many care recipients also donated their love to help quake survivors in Nepal. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dai Headlines. Goodbye.